name? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're the, uh, the vigilante guy, right? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say vigilante, but... Careful out there, man. There's some uh, people that might take more umbrage to your activity. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> People generally find that, that filming people's faces when they're in trauma like this is pretty not welcome. Yeah, so... <laughs> so try not to show faces. Like, just aim down at their feet if you must kind of thing. I'm all about the press. Don't show people's faces. It's not cool. They live here. This is their living room right now. Yeah. Some of them are, some of them are running. Some of them don't want to... Some of them are running from people who are after them, not in law. So just don't do that to them. Me? Um, no, my own YouTube you channel. Shit. Um, he's trash. You're talking about the guy with the There's bald head? Guy getting yelled at right now because he's got a camera on somebody? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Go home. Come on, go home. Yeah. Knock it off, dude. Go. 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 Hmm. You're not helping. Go. Go. You don't kill people in their living room. Yeah, Fucking cop, motherfucker. It's not right. But... Fucking bitch. Hard enough as it is, you got this guy walking up with a fucking can and a fucking fit. I have no yeah, keep up the, keep up the shitty line. Hey, fuck you, you motherfucker! I lost my fucking kids in my home to a fucking house fire! No, no fight now, guys, okay? You fucking bitch! Yeah, That's my fucking home, motherfucker! Don't overstep it, buddy. Pete, Pete, fuck you! Pete, Don't overstep it. Pete. You overstep. Go! Hey, it's private property. Leave him alone. What's wrong with you? You own it or you do it? No, you're up there, buddy. I'm filming for the community. Everybody here has to leave it. You're on it? I'm filming for the community. You ain't there. You ain't no help for the fucking community, Jack. Look, I'm not going to sit here and yell at you. Don't, don't sit here and provoke fights with the hey, residents. Hey, they're hey. residing. They're not residents here. They are. They're they are. Yeah, we are. They're they are. They're 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 residing in the residences. Illegally. Right. And you know it, dude. And you support this shit. Fuck you, man. You go over to help us. Fucking bitch. I'm not saying he doesn't help you, dude. He helps you a lot. Yeah, you are causing more problems for us right now. You guys caused the problem in this community. Fuck you, bitch. You're the problem. You're the problem, Jimmy. You're stealing from all the stores. You're stealing from all the stores. Who said you steal, bitch? I don't steal nothing. Oh, you don't? At all. Seriously, Jimmy? You don't steal. Seriously, Jimmy. Jimmy, better shut the fuck up. Hey! No physical, okay? Thank you. What's going on over here behind the Winco and the Lowe's? Well, as far as I know, there was a sign posted on these trees here. Uh, they want this uh, encampment out of here and today they're they're going to uh, move them out we're gonna move them out um, it's just it's it's a mess it's, as you can hear all the gawking um, so it's it's just it's 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 insanity is what it is and it's sad what's happening it's sad what I see. I mean, I, I feel for these people, but I don't think they really care about what's going on here, to, to tell you the truth. But let's just see how smooth it goes. I, they're all being pretty good about it. And they're, uh, they're all supposed to be out of here today. I'd like my friends to go get their mental health help, too. And it's, I mean, there's just trash everywhere up there. Tents. It's, uh, it's a mess. It is a fucking mess. It fucking I'm interested to see how well it goes. Sorry, how well they, right how well they, uh, um, work with the, the Bellingham police and the, the property owner. I guess the property is coming out here to clean all this up, and is going to be bringing equipment in here. So they're going to have to be out of here. You know. What was the ETA for him actually coming out today, at, at eight o'clock? was the start but Let's I don't really them. see anything I think they're trying to get them out s smoothly first before you know no, they don't want anybody getting hurt so they're they're just trying but to get them out of there hurt anybody then because we're not hurting anybody either so 
Then what was exactly the timetable for how the encampment started okay. and then for how the eviction and everything were laid, was laid out afterwards? Well, the plan is to have all this encampment cleaned up, get everybody out, and uh, I guess he's going to put a fence up around the property. And Bellingham Police are going to oversee the removal of the and campers here okay yeah that I think this was declared like a biohazard wasn't it yeah i i don't know did you hear anything something about like that? that because of all of them pooing in the river and the creek yeah wow. yeah but you know i hope the best i hope they you know find somewhere to go was there any other presence besides uh, police and property owner? Not yet. There hasn't been any. I don't know if the property owner is here or not. I don't believe he is. Um, unless he's parked He's in. He lives in California, last I heard. I thought he actually lived up the road. Oh, I have no clue. Well, I thought he lived off Telegraph here, but I'm not sure on that. But far as I know, that the property owner has... He has a lot to do with what's happening here. So. And there was ac actually that was one thing they said they were trying to bring a suit against him because he wasn't responding. Yeah. What was that all about? Uh, I'm not sure. I believe that he probably ended up working with them, and maybe uh, I don't really know the stipulations on the outcome of what <coughs> what the court was all about between the property owner and the uh, the city. I'm not sure what the outcome was. All I know is that there was a sign posted on the tree over here and throughout the property perimeter that on the 8th is when they're going to start initiating the removal of the encampment and the cleanup. And was there anything else besides just the 8th? Was there anything like whether there was escalation or not, if there is still anything going on? No, they're trying to, it's, they're trying to keep it pretty smooth on that. You know, they don't want any craziness. You know, like we just went up there in the encampment and that caused a little bit of ruckus there. I bet they don't want but, craziness. They you know, crazy. I just wanted to film the uh, the encampment and, and, and how bad it had, had gotten through the two years or whatever long it has been since they've been up there. Um, at one point it was just a few camps up there and then I, it's just been spotty. At one time, there must have been, how many campers were up there at one time? I think over a hundred. Over a hundred campers were up there. A hundred people were up there camping. And the amount of crime back then when that was happening, around all these stores was insanity. It was insane. It was like a free-for-all. I mean, these stores are getting just taken advantage of and there's nothing to help stop it. The only thing to help stop is the community. And there's so much outrage by these encampers that they, they 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 think that we owe them they think that you know we owe them and they should have the right to just take whatever they want what was your relation by the way beyond just covering this to the location here be it, um, be it as a resident of Bellingham or as a business owner or what have you just uh, curious about that. About what? Say that again. About your relation to the location here, whether it's just as a well, partner or whatnot. I, um, I live here in, in the county, Whatcom County area, and I have had a lot of theft in my area, theft from myself actually. So, and it has a lot of people in this community have been stolen from. And the problem with me is they took my livelihood away from me. They came and they took everything that I had to make a living, you know, for my family. And they, that was personal. Hey, Jimmy, this is an aid station. If you don't mind, let people come here comfortably. They're not comfortable hey, with you. Hey, I'm not making it. Just give them space. I am. There's like, what, 15 feet there? Yeah, well, feet? I heard you were brandishing up on the hill. I don't like that. I didn't here. brandish I like shit. shit. I didn't brandish shit. Did you bring shit. a gun with you today? Somebody yeah. knows you did. I have a right to wear an arm. Somebody knows you got it. And it's I don't. Side I was curious, was this uh, post-COVID or was this during the lockdown that you're... It was, uh, it was about a couple years, a few years ago. 
um, oh. when I got robbed. Oh. Um, but being that, it's, it's, that's not the <laughs> that's not the problem. No, we did that's not. not the problem. The problem is the the uh, temperament behind the minds of these encampers. The and I'm a local here, and I'm I don't like what you. I see. And I'm gonna California. I'm gonna take a stand against it. And I always will take a stand against it. Me too, Jimmy. Right on. I'll take a stand against it. Wow, I didn't know you were that way. Huh. Well, that I don't want right. poop in your backyard. I don't want people getting displaced all over our town and shoved out of every public space Neither and onto private property Neither where the owner gets sued for that shit. This is a policy issue. And you're coming down here and raising hell, brandishing fucking weapons. I didn't I brandish there's more than one person. I don't see the gun. That means you're concealed. But somebody saw your gun. Nothing. Why? You, I didn't you brandish see anything. Me, you seem to be a very concerned man. So you uh, tell we're just, me we're just we're just taking a little camera time here now. I'm leaving. I'm just asking you're right next you. to an aid station. Do wait, it somewhere else. Wait, wait a minute. You know this was an aid station. I'm, I'm just, just asking you what can, can, what what can, can you do? What can you do to help? We're here to help, and Michael. we need all the help we can get. So what can you offer in the way of help for this? What would you like from me? I, I'd like to have some answers. I'd like to have somebody that doesn't tell us what has to be done right I'm now. Not, Without having an option, what are you doing? I'm all about helping. Yeah. Okay, so what is it that you can offer? And I'll tell you, we're with the Opportunity Council, Lummy. There's several places in town. We're here to help. We're here to give them Narcan and to give them water, I'm garbage all for that. bags. I'm all for that. Then I, I don't understand the negativity. I'm not so trying to be negative. There's a up there in the black car. You can go up and offer your services to her, and we can use every hand we can get. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you guys too. Sorry for the whatever that was. Anyways, yep. have a good day. You guys stole our land. Oh, I did, huh? I had nothing to do with that. Go back on your boats and go back where you came from. Raise hell on camera. Bro, do you know me, Joe? So, what exactly was going on here today? We're being forced out of our home. Or, you know, what we consider home. I've been here over two years. And, you know, with squatters' rights, it's just 30 days. Then you have legal rights to the, to the property where you are. And I, we heard that the, the owner wanted to put dumpsters and porta potties here so we could stay here and have a clean up there. And we tried to clean it up. And uh, Winco had their freaking employees bring all the trash back up there. And all these businesses, they won't let us use their bathrooms or their dumpsters, and that's why there's all the trash is built up like that. They kind of threw us in a hole, turned the hose on, didn't give us a chance to live a clean life either. So what was the timetable for the eviction? Because I had heard last minute that there was one going on, like so... three, four days tops. What about the, maybe like two years back and then so on? Could you give a detail of that? Um, I wasn't here on that one. Maybe as like as far back as here when you first heard about them wanting to do an eviction. What was the timetable on that as far as like you can three, remember? Four days, like I said. Just that? Mm -hmm. Less than a week. Okay. <coughs> And, you know, I mean, it's, like I said, uh, all these businesses are all working together and they all think of us as a disease or something. Can't even walk around through their parking lots or whatever. They all freak out and hire all the security. Was and there... We're not the trouble. They're making us trouble. I was curious. Was there a personal uh, experience you had with uh, any trouble with the nearby businesses? Oh, I mean, like a personal story that you, that you had of it specifically from you, or from just how you might have been treated when going through a business or two here. The uh, you know, to to go use the toilet, they won't let us use the toilet because we're homeless. Well, I mean, like a personal story, if you could tell about how you experienced that. I mean, that specifically. Yeah, if you had it. one, that's just the sad part. I mean, you know, we, you know, we had to go bathroom, had to go take a shit, and couldn't do that because we can't go in there because we're homeless. 
They won't let us go in there. Even if we buy something, they still won't let us use the bathroom. What, beyond aid workers, were there any other agencies that came to help out or others that came to speak with you guys? Uh, mostly Opportunity Council and uh, Outreach. I'm not too sure on what all their names are. Have you had any near incidences like that or have things mostly been calm? Um, I mean, like, have there been any th any things to occur in the camp that might have been needed to be addressed? Because some have said that there was an overdose death a while back that apparently was the catalyst for them serving the eviction. So I didn't know if there's anything you had in about that or... Yeah, some of the, you know, people do die. I mean, you know, it's a part of the the drug addiction it's you know it's 50 50 every time you you know hit every time you take a hit and it's like we have nothing else to do I mean not all of us can get a job not all of us can get public housing not all of us can do section 8 you know we're kind of just forced into this this homeless life how long have you been on the streets then? About two years. Has that been uh, p during COVID or what do you recall doing before you were forced on the streets? Like, like uh, yeah, it was like right after and towards the end of the COVID. Because <coughs> <coughs> you also talked, or some people had even cited the Lummi tribes or one of the aid workers did. Have they ever come down specifically? Yeah. Nooksack tribe and the Lummi tribe and the Opportunity Council and there's this Hispanic family. They all come down and they feed us like different days of the week, you know, to help. They give us, you know, toiletries and, you know, like band-aids and Narcan and, you know. And did the property owner and they offer us, you know, treatment if we want? And for the property owner, you said that he that he was offering things like toiletries and and service services or yeah, the city wouldn't let him. And how long ago did they raise that? Only like you said, four days, or was that? That was like when all this. I can't, it was a few months ago, I think. But, you know, he wanted to, you know, put dumpsters and porta potties here for us, and they wouldn't let him because they didn't want us here. Did he ever come down personally, also, or was this just simply him corresponding no. through email? Or? He, hasn't, he hasn't been able to talk with us, we haven't been able to talk with him. It's all, all we get is hearsay from the Bellingham Police Department. That's true. What a strong arming type vibe. Yeah. So they just sim So would that mean they were corresponding with him, telling him about? You know. What yeah, may I enter? Yeah, yeah, sure. Basically, we've had about four or five incidents where the cops will. At first, they come up there just for their actual work, like you know, what I mean, going for like boosters or whatever the hell it is that they're looking for specifically. And then afterwards, it was more so a process of like, they had somebody who owned the property, right? And basically what they're doing is they're trying to get a hold of that person. That's as far as I know. I've been here from start to finish until it really diminished. And honestly, most of the time, it's basically they have tried to find ways to kind of just flood us out type of thing. Like they're, the actual person who owned the land or said that they owned the land or, you know, was in charge of it only came once, but really gave us a warning. And that was about like five months ago for everybody to leave. And I feel like the, um, I would say the Lummies, they kind of, it was during that winter time, they kind of got put in Bellis Inn for a little bit shorter time. And then all the rest of the people who were living up here, it was like a graveyard. And it was just like, after that, they realized, okay, I feel like since everybody still came back to the hill, it was like, all right, now that the major people that are, you know, having, doing the crime per se in the area, it's like, it's less of that. And now it's just a homeless camp. And still, they don't want us up here to the point where I've actually, like, 
I literally have stayed here and nobody makes that much trash where there's trash getting literally brought up from other places to get put there. Like I've heard the Domino's the workers are put to, like told by the police to just put fucking trash there just so it's like kind of like maneuver for us to be like like dirtied on purpose and more rats trying to like flood us out with that and it's like it was the only fucking place that some of us to know where to go or have been for the longest time you know what I mean and it's like it's not something where there is a whole fucking you know drug flea market or something that's super crazy like it's not that extensive at all it's literally just people trying to live and that's why it's really sad and um very depressing that it's something it has to be sadly that it's behind a, a major store and a home depot like if it was anywhere else i'd love it to be somewhere else and if it had a little bit more structure i wanted it months ago for everybody just to pick up some trash but it's almost like it was us against ourselves and even when i mean afterwards we thought it was better it's just kind of got worse and worse and worse and um Nothing's really changed, but when it came down to actually authorities coming through, there was no major change of like actually like that specific like judi like you know what I mean judicial or like you know anybody who was above actually doing something like cooperative. It was only okay. mostly strong arm type vibe with the police coming through, not the actual person. Like, hey, this is my. You know what I mean, but so for the owner himself, you said that he actually did come down, but only to serve a warning then, or yeah, he served a warning and he literally. This is about five months ago was I, this before the pro the other encampment got torn down and you said people yeah. moved in this is like around that time actually and then you that. said that now was this before or after he said he was giving temporary uh plumbing and services i never that's the crazy thing about it is that i could even ask like most 60 70 percent of people up here they probably never heard of that they probably never heard of any of those services being even given or thought of all that I remember is specifically, like, around that time, I think you're talking about the BioLife little area or that. Well, I, he had specifically said that they had offered, so I wanted to clarify that in case that was maybe before or after he initially said that he was offering the warning. Because that seems well, a little bit more unclear if he had said that after. Okay. Uh, but if it was before, I then think, you'd see how that would make more sense. I think, honestly... It's so skewered that I didn't even know that that was a thing to the point that I didn't even know that was actual like idea that that happened almost to the point where literally all I know is it was a tug of war between the owner trying to you know I mean actually put power into doing something about it and then him stepping back or some sort of shift in it where now it's kind of like between you know it's not going to be wind codes but it's going to be Home Depot's problem and then and then then it can actually just step in and totally just be done with it it wasn't actually like I've never heard of any, so I can't really answer that question specifically. Okay. But I do, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it if they really did offer that. I would say it's probably afterwards, honestly, to answer that. But if that was a thing, I mean, it only seems, there was no change, though. There was really actually, like, him stepping in and following up, I mean, with that. If it was afterwards, regardless, I don't know, sadly. Okay. Yeah, because things just kind of got, like, only reason I say that is because... Yeah. Things started literally like I know that a lot of people up here are sadly drug addicts. They don't eat that much. There definitely isn't bags of trash. Just it just literally just gets put up there sometimes, and I've noticed it when it's happened. And it's a it's, it's sad, honestly. I don't know. I don't really have much else to say besides most of the people that are left here really were just trying to live, you know. So it is what it is. So, do you, uh, what, what was your timetable for when you came down here? Um, honestly, when I came down here, it was almost a year and a half ago. And it was basically, it was about six tenths total. And it was very, like, it was mostly field. <clears throat> it was mostly field. It barely any trash, a lot of bushes, like a lot of those bushes that you see up there were more full bloom, obviously. It was a whole bush area. You had to go around that, and then it was a straight line of just, like, five or six tenths. And then it kind of grew as people who were, are, you know, I mean, the people that there was never anybody in here who was like doing some like big drug ring or anything. It was usually people that kind of came out with like from the outside and came in with it. And so I think that was the problem is that people started seeing that like, oh, this is where people get something. So they started kind of like planning it. And so even it kind of like tainted it because people that were actually trying to live here, it kind of, you know, I mean, it, it creates a cycle of then we're not getting anywhere if we have people that are drug dealers here that want to live here and then make it you know what I mean do fuckery it's just kind of it ruins the whole I've been here for since there's like six tenths honestly and then all the way till when there's 31 tenths damn near I used to count like like and it was a shame because it was like most of the tents were stolen. Like you could obviously see it. You know, you got R E I R E I R. You could literally count it. You know, this where they got this one, and it's 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 just a sad 
You know what I mean? It's just a sad drug addiction. And regardless, one thing I have to say though is that even if everybody right here is leaving, it's more so somewhere to live, not somewhere to get their fix. And that's the thing people probably got messed up. It's like, oh, they're not going to be able to get their drugs. It's like, no, it's more so we're not going to have really a place. We kind of actually like grew some sort of like relationship, like a family. Like, you know what I mean? Without knowingly having it happen, it kind of happened. So it's kind of, a, it, you know what I mean? We don't have much structure, and a lot of people have a lot of mental issues up here, but it's also, they came together, and people accept, once you get in there, and they accept you for you, they accept you for you, because we all know we have flaws, and it was, you know I mean, that's why we get really upset and passionate about people that come up here, like, I, like, with cameras, just without saying anything, and just start, you know what I mean, it's like, uh, and so we feel like, almost like a pose, like, because we don't want to be exploited, sadly, they treat it the wrong way, and they want to come, like, we come kind of, you know, passionately the wrong way about it, but it's really, like, what do you expect when you come in with, you know what I mean, with that certain energy, you kind of get that energy back, but, um, it makes us look ballistic, and it's a damn shame, but, um, I do have one more thing yeah. then to add, so they said that there was one overdose death, There's could like you just, six. well, I mean, specifically one that was the catalyst for them, I think, around December to issue the eviction because of that? Was it the one that was, um... I don't know specifically what the person's name was, but it was might have been, but I can't say for sure. But it was prominent because people it's, said it's very sad because like I think the catalyst one you're talking about is it was it's crazy because there's actually been six ODs in here about that, and the only one that I think is catalyst is the one person who didn't actually live here. They just were coming to. You know, do what they were doing, and then they OD'd here, and then it was like, okay, now I got someone from the community that's like, it was a problem. I think that was the catalyst. I can't even really pin, but I think I know exactly what you're talking about that incident, and um, that was yeah, around December. I was literally just had left and came back last month, and um, you're that, that's correct. I think honestly, that's probably what that was what triggered. Like it's crazy because a lot of people the past year that have been like this lady behind me. Totally, I wouldn't say normal, but she definitely wasn't how she's acting right now. Like, she's, like, totally, I mean, clear-headed, but it's sad because it's kind of like, you are you are who you surround yourself around, you know what I mean? And so it's kind of like, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but um, you just, you are what you attract, and so I don't really, like, I don't know. I was going to say, also, a lot of people's timetables seem to have happened during COVID. Would you say yours was for... During the end of COVID, I'd say? Like, there was still COVID being... Um, I mean, for, like, what caused people to come down here, too. Would you say that had any impact on your being here and... No. Not really, honestly. I don't, I don't really think so. Because when I think about it now, because I was here from literally when, like, there was, like I said, like, six or seven tents and they were having little bonfires it was like each little like click and they had their tents together and they knew each other and then it went from a lot of people and there was never any sort of like any COVID like nobody even mentioned COVID like yeah it, was, it wasn't like oh well I mean more like would from you losing a job and being forced on the streets sort I could see that happening I just have never heard first I mean was that, that what, how you end up on the streets then or have you I always say, I could say more so maybe someone who was already per se on the streets but they're like going through like base camp or something like that and their rules at the time was totally different because of COVID so it was a lot more strict they wanted to kind of like get away from it because it was just too too excessive you know what I mean but we never had any like I don't think like cases of people coming because they lost a job because of COVID I think like it's a little bit more far-fetched not to like be super opposition about it I've just never heard it personally though. okay Oh, okay. Go ahead. Because uh, um, I was telling the, uh, these helpers that I, I, I was one of the first people that camped up here with another couple, and I've been here for a year and a half, and um, right now I'm taking it really hard because I basically, you know, lived up here, and I was stable enough to, you know, be able to get through, and I became homeless because I have no family. My family passed away. And, I mean, I, I could have got a job, yeah, but, like, um, <laughs> I haven't had, like, the right kind of help or, help or anything, and basically, this up here was, you know, like, my whole life. Would you say, though, you end up on the streets during COVID just based off of... Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, there wasn't like no like no help basically like for me and that's what led me to you know come up here and there's no other spots for us to you know go and once everybody started coming up here like you know they became family to me and like right now like like the city is just looking at us like you know like we're just homeless people and like you know because of trash and like there's no reason for it because you know we're human and we, we could have got help you know a long time ago <laughs> now would you say uh could you give a timetable for how the eviction came down as well as uh apparently the property owner did you ever witness him coming down here to offer services or uh no uh i know that quite a few people uh talk to the owner though like they talk to them uh themselves and he said that it was fine once we started coming up here he gave us the okay to you know camp up here and that's what led us to put up our tents and then um other people started seeing that we had tents up here and so they felt that they could you know also come camp up here too and people came and came and gone but uh after those people seen the owner he hasn't came up came up here like you know pure like periodically and i think it was just a couple times so now they said also that the owner had uh kind of changed a little on his stance because at first he had offered services like uh porta potties and so on but then they said he came up only once and that was to issue a warning so yeah. I was wondering in which order that was, because they weren't uh, clear on whether it was after that he gave the warning or before he offered the plumbing. I think it was last summer that he came and gave the warning, because uh, I've been up here since last December, oh no, last November, and prior to when we first moved up here, and a couple months gone by, and then they started noticing that we're here, and then that's when the warning happened, and then after that, it stopped for a while and then like months later like october that's when somebody stepped in and said that the owner is being sued and so from october to like now that's when we haven't heard anything from the owner like he hasn't came up here and talked to any of us he um hasn't said anything or even wrote anything on the property or nothing and uh so that's what uh, we basically are here for because like he just put, like hasn't said anything to us okay yeah this well, is like this camp's been up here for like a year and a half now yeah so i was wanting to get that because that seemed to be one of the major issues plus with how yeah. people came to be over here so yeah. other than that that's what you'd say it's a good timetable for yeah. when the eviction came down and so on yeah yep um other than that like we haven't uh we haven't had no issues like with him or anything he hasn't came and I don't know. They did say there was a cat. There was a death, or or rather, there was a report that there was an overdose death yeah. that was a catalyst for it. But I even heard some say there's six in here. Yeah. Were there any more, or could no. you personally? No, uh, I I think it was just six. I say like six to eight uh, overdoses. Eight. Yeah. Like, have you just uh, heard about extra ones, or no, was I mean, that... No, so, some people kind of, uh, like, think that there was, you know, more, but I think, like, if you really count them, it's, like, less than what, you know, people say, because people will say one thing, and then they'll hear it from another person. Was, was there a possibility, too, that there are people that went unreported, like, in their own tents, but weren't found, but were moved away by other people, or... Would you no, say no. they would be found? Yeah, they, um, I mean, they were in their tents for a while, like, you know, like, you know, the bodies and stuff, but then, um, we reported it to the, uh, the cops and, you know, the ambulance and stuff in the corners to come and remove them from their tents. But, but, like, the only thing is, like, they were in the tents, like, for hours, though. And okay. that's, uh, the thing that's, you know, really sad is that nobody checked on them, you know, and nobody was able to get the Narcan in time, so... That's yeah. Okay. But, uh, there, there hasn't been nobody that hasn't reported it or anything. Every death that has been up here has been, you know, called in for. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that. Yeah. Thank you.